Right, we are live. Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for joining Churchill Tax's uh, webinar on tax planning regard in relation to properties. Um, my name is Jamal Khan. I'm a senior tax partner at Churchill Tax Advisors. I'm a charter tax advisor. And I've got my colleague here with me today, Alan Milne. Alan is also a Charter Tax Advisor. He's a Senior Tax Manager at Churchill Tax Advisors. And uh, Alan has over 30 years of experience uh, in advising clients on uh, tax matters. Alan is also a Chartered Accountant with, uh, and, and a key member of the team. Uh, today we're talking about properties, the uh, Essentially, this, this, this webinar is aimed at landlords who have properties and um, they, they are looking for various methods to mitigate their tax liability. Um, where, where, uh, and there have been some recent changes in the legislation which, which are quite key for landlords to understand in terms of how the property tax planning uh, will be changing over the coming uh, coming years, and it's it's important that 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 landlords are aware of of these key changes. Um, so, Alan, I, I can I pass yes. on to you. I know you've prepared your your presentation uh, to go through over the next few minutes, and and uh, then we can take and start taking any questions. Alan, yep. over to you, please, if you want to start sharing your slides. Yes, uh, good, good, afternoon, good afternoon, everybody. Thanks for, um, for joining the webinar today. Um, yeah, I mean, f first of all, for those who aren't really just a, there's just a slide there that uh, gives a little bit of information about um, who we are and what we do. Um, I haven't got the slides yet. You have to start, start the presentation. I think. Yeah, there we yeah. are. Sorry. Um, yes, there's a little bit of information there about, about who, who, who we are and what we do. Specialist tax advisory firm based in London and Essex, able to offer national coverage, and there's a list there of the various um, aspects of, of tax that we can can handle for you. Um, so, the, the, the agenda this morning, this afternoon, um, we're going to be focusing for part, part of the presentation on on, on company, companies and, incorpor and incorporation. Um, the, 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 about the pros and cons of incorporation and, what, and also what happens if you have multiple associated companies. Um, then we will move on to um, look briefly at partnerships um, and, and, and how, they, how, they, how they can benefit you. And, uh, and then just a, a, a short few words at the end on, on some inheritance tax issues. Um, so, um, Starting with talking about incorporation, um, by incorporation we, we, we are referring to transferring properties into a limited company. Um, the main issues that can arise on when you, when you do this is um, potentially capital gain. There's a potential capital gains charge um, based on the market value of the property. Um, this can, in some circumstances, be mitigated by incorporation relief. Um, which, which is available, um, but um, can can be a bit contentious, and HMRC can can deny it in in, in some instances. There's also um, the issue of stamp duty, uh, which um, can arise um, when properties a property portfolio is incorporated, um, and, and this can to some extent be, um, on some circumstances, be m m mitigated by move, moving from sole ownership via a partnership um, and and in, in into a company um so that, yes the, the the mechanics are uh, of of um, in, um incorporating via a partnership um a partnership is formed um typically between a, um, a husband and wife um it's run as a business for that there has to be a, a, a track record that hmr can see so we recommend that at least two two or three years um, there's got to be some direct involvement by the partners in running the business. It can't just just be um, an, um, an an investment. They, they have to be actually sort of involved um, in the day-to-day -day management of the of the, of the property business. 
Um, and as a sort of rule of thumb, it's recommended that uh, a minimum of 20 hours a week um, involvement um, is, is sufficient to show that there is um, real involvement by the partners in, in, in the business. Um, you have to show that there's a, pro a profit, mo profit motive. Um, the business can't run at a loss as, or, or not intentionally at a loss. Um, there's got to be the intention there from the outset to 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 make a profit uh and in these circumstances um if if those conditions are are met then um the the partners where on the corporation get shares um in in the company in exchange for their for for, for the for the for the properties um and the value of the shares is determined um in accordance with with, with that with, with that section of the um, um, taxation of chargeable gains act um yes moving on to the benefits in, of incorporation um i mean incorporation has become popular um in in, in recent years um due to the, the restriction that there is now on um, interest deductions for properties held in personal name um commonly referred to as section 24 but this means that um interest is deduction is, is for, for individual landlords is limited to to, to basic rate uh, and that restriction doesn't exist um at present in in, in the corporate scenario that there is the, the opportunity to, to not to be charged cap, capital gains tax on on the incorporation um no SGLT on incorporation of the partnership i mean both those points are, are subject to the uh, so the conditions that I mentioned on, on, on the previous slide. Um, and, and once the properties are incorporated, that, um, that there's a market value uplift. Um, the properties go, uh, it, uh, go in at um, an uplifted lifted value and, and any gain is calculated um, by, ref, by reference to that uplifted value. Um, so, yeah, so yeah, yes, so the properties can be sold and 19% capital gains tax on, on the uplifted amount since incorporation. The drawbacks of incorporation, um, as I said, that currently there is no, no um, interest and restriction for companies, but um, tax law is always in flux. That can always change. Um, the government may change in, in its uh, need to, to bring in more tax may um, apply, extend those section 24 rules so that they apply to, um, to, to, to companies as well so there's no there's no guarantee that won't happen there is a stamp a stamp duty risk um, although as I outlined there is a route to incorporation via via a partnership um, HMRC can always challenge that and uh, attempt to deny it um, and by the time that happens, the incorporation has already happened. So, so, so there's no going back. So there's always that, that risk that, that, they, that they, they may challenge and you find yourself with a, with a, with a stamp duty bill. Um, there's the anti-avoidance provisions, particularly in, in respect of incorporation relief, as, as, as I touched on earlier. Uh, the, the costs of transferring mortgages. If a mortgage is in personal name, it, uh, and, it, and you want to, to move it to uh, a partnership, to, to, Sorry, to a company, um, then not all lenders are particularly sympathetic to that, and there's, there's the, the risk of costs involved. Um, and lastly, in terms of drawbacks, there's the in, the inheritance tax risk, which, which doesn't does, doesn't go away because because you, you you still have by moving the properties into the to the, the company, you still have a portfolio but, um, of on an, an investment at the same value. Essentially, based on the value of the properties, so so you so you're not mitigating or avoiding that risk in any way by by going into in, in into a, into a company. Um, yes, just just comment for for a few seconds on the on on incorporate on the tax the taxation issues. Um, Corporation tax is currently nineteen percent. It's going up to twenty five percent with effect from April twenty. 13, um, there is taper relief available. Um, 
The 19% rate applies um, to profits of 50,000 and there's marginal relief on profits going up to 250,000. Um, HMRC estimate that 70% of companies are not caught, but um, with previous experience from the small companies rate, it's never quite that simple though, that there are, there are issues that can arise. Um, applying that specifically to the to the scenario of of um, of, of a property business, um, the, the the thresholds that, that I referred to on the previous slide are, are are reduced for associated companies. Where you've got multiple companies, the the thresholds have to be divided between those companies. Um, and in a in in a, in a property business, it, it's typical to have, to have different aspects of the business split into dis different companies. There may be a, a, a development company, um, a, a company for holding the buy to let properties, a, an overall holding company, a special purpose vehicle, and for all the, these potential additional additional further companies, the, the threshold needs to be um, uh, divided by a number of companies. So, although prima facie you may seem to have a have a a, a, prop, a company that's um that's small for the purposes of corporation tax. Once all these issues are taken into account, it's, it is quite possible that 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 it, that it may not be small and it might fall into the into the marginal band or even become large. So just to say a, a, a few words about part, the partnership structure. This is an alternative um, to companies. Or, or, or it can be a route into into, into corporate ownership. Um, in, a, in a partnership, in a, in a family property partnership, you typically have um, husband and wife and and adult children, children over sixteen. Um, the, the first step is that the the, 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 the properties are transferred in, in, in into the partnership, um, and then a small percentage of the value of the properties is gifted to to to, to, the, to the children um it, it 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 does have to be small in order to um, avoid a a capital gains tax charge on 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 a transfer it has to be within the the, the annual um, cgt exemption and then as a, as a third stage there is a um a, a gift of um, a share in the, in in the in the partnership equity to the children, and and this, this triggers the the, the seven percent clock for the tapering away of um, the inheritance tax charge. Um, yeah, and to, just to address the question of inheritance tax for, for a minute, it's obviously a major concern for any for, for anyone making wishing making to make intergenerational transfers of, of rental properties. Um, Property obviously a very very valuable valuable asset, and particularly in, in London, a lot of a lot of value is in the in in the properties. Um, and as I said earlier, incorporation doesn't do do anything to assist assist with uh, inheritance tax mitigation. However, if you do go go in, into a partnership um, by gifting a, a a partnership capital account and or a small percentage of part properties. To the, to the children, this this will be a potentially exempt transfer, and therefore um, not subject to inheritance tax, provided that the donors have survived for seven years, and, and in those circumstances that there, there is taper relief. Um, I mean, if the donor dies within within the the, the, the seven years of the gift, then there, there will be be inheritance tax that that can't be avoided entirely, uh, but it is mitigated by. Um, as, as the years pass, as, 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 the, as the, the tax rate uh, taper, tapers away. So, just to, just to to conclude, um, the, the incorporation of a property portfolio can provide tax benefits, but there is uh, the, the subject to to, co to to costs and risks, as I outlined at now earlier in the incorporation section of this. Uh, Presentation: um, Apportionment of corporation tax thresholds within groups means that even companies that appear on first sight to be small could be caught by the new the 20, new twenty five percent rate when it comes in. Um, and as I highlighted on the last slide, that inheritance tax 
can be mitigated by transferring properties uh, in, into into a partnership structure. Um, so that, that that concludes the, uh, the my, my short presentation, and um, we're, we're happy to take questions. <clears throat> Thank you, Alan. You can you can stop share, sharing now. Um, and and uh, that, that was very useful. I've got a couple of questions here. Do any landlords need to who are thinking about incorporation and do are think, looking to transfer their properties into a limited company? Do they need to worry about this now? Should they be thinking? Should they be thinking about um, transferring? Whether they should be transferring or not, if if, uh, if the property is into a limited company now, as the corporation tax rates are going up. Well, yes, I think as long as the, the longer the longer you the longer you delay, delay, the more risk there is. That there is, and 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 as we we we've got this corporation tax hike coming. Um, and, and, and that's foreseeable. Then, then I, you know, I think it, it's it's it, it's worth getting the ball rolling as as, as early as possible. Uh, there's no, no no reason to delay. Yeah, you know, the, some of the clients that that uh, that I have spoken to, and they've asked whether it's still worthwhile incorporating, um, whether, because the corporation tax rates are going up. Uh, and uh, my, my my response to them has been. Well, you've got to think about whether you've got any other associated companies or not. And if you've got associated companies, uh, then then there is likely that you will you will start paying the higher rate of tax rather than the 19 percent. If you haven't got any associated companies, the, the turnover of, turnover of these companies is going to be low. The rental income is going to be less than two hundred fifty thousand uh, pounds, or, or it's going to be within the, the marginal uh, rates. Then 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 yes, maybe think about. Uh, whether it's uh, you need to do a calculation essentially if, if you are if you're going to have if you've got already got a company or two companies then then the then you might you might be bitten with a, or you might be stung with a higher a higher rate of corporation tax so the the, the marginal advantage that people get uh, in incorporating a, and paying tax at 19 percent may be lost so it might be worth Doing, asking your tax advisor or your accountant, or you could come to ask us to do a full analysis on whether it's, it's worthwhile or not uh, to incorporate. Uh, I've, I've had the same question being asked a couple of times in the last in the last two, few weeks. Uh, as the rules have changed, is it still worthwhile? And my question is, it depends. It all depends. I think you've got to look at look at the the, the, the personal tax rates that you're you're, you're paying. I mean, if, if you're a lot of income in the in the in the in the forty percent band or even higher, then then that, that, that that's going to be, a, be be one factor that's, that could push you towards a, towards incorporation. Yeah, it's not as simple enough. I mean, a lot of people say to me, "I'll say, yeah, give me an answer in yes or no," and I say, it's "Unfortunately, I cannot give an answer in yes or no uh, because your circumstances can change. You could already have a company. You could have already, you could set up a company in the future." Uh, and, and if there are two more than one, one, if there's more than one company, more than two companies, then then, then the then you're starting to bounce into the, the the higher rate of corporation tax. So it's something to it's, it, it was simple until uh, before the the budget was announced. Every company was paying corporation tax at 19 uh, percent, and, and uh, that was quite nice because we didn't have to worry about these associated companies rules. But now the, it does make a difference. What we are noticing now is a lot of people are asking us about the LLP structure and the partnership structure, which Alan briefly touched upon. So Alan uh, uh, kind of essentially walked through the essential, uh, through the through the, through the fundamentals. But with this LLP structure, you don't have to worry about the corporation tax rates mm -hmm. and the excessive uh, the changes that can be brought in. You can you can manage your uh, tax planning. Uh, within the within the LLP, so so for me, I think that that, that still remains as as the favourite. Uh, that, that's how I see it. LLP planning has been my my favourite, my personal favourite for for many years, because I have always found there to be a lot of flexibility within that. 
uh, which other pe what, which other structures as a corporation are putting into a uh, trust or putting into a limited company um, does not allow that kind of flexibility. Uh, you can break a limited company, but you can break a partnership or an LLP. So something something to to be wary of, and uh, something to be to be to be mindful of when 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 you are making a decision on how to put together how to structure your property portfolio. Right, excellent. We're running out of time now, Alan. I'm, I'm great. I think you did a very good pre presentation. If you've, anybody's got any questions, uh, you can contact me or Alan. You've, you've got our telephone numbers. You've got our email addresses. Uh, Alan's. Uh, if you haven't got Alan's email, it's a dot milne m i l n e at Churchill dash tax dash advisors dot co dot uk. And my name, my email is Jamal uh, J dot Khan K H A N at Churchill dash tax dash advisors dot co dot uk. Or, or you can call us uh, on our office number. Thank you very much, everyone. You take care. Bye. Bye.